Okay, three, two, one. Here we go. Today we have uh, Betsy Price uh, running for council in Warty. Thanks for seeing me. Appreciate Thank you, <laughs> Jan. It's lovely to see you. <laughs> beautiful so, evening. <laughs> yeah, beautiful evening. Um, so I prepared um, five questions for you today and thanks for replying to my messages so i'll be reading the questions twice and kind of like rephrase it and um, just let me know if you want me to repeat it and okay. so the first topic you're in the hot seat right. <laughs> the, <Fair> first, <laughs> the first <laughs> topic <laughs> is about you okay. if you were given a magic wand to change anything in this town what would it be and why or should i say if you had a magic wand and could change anything in this town, what would you change and why? All right. So I can take the whole municipality as the town, right? Since I'm running yeah, a ward too. Yeah, yeah. Okay, of course. fair enough. Uh, let's see. Well, your timing is excellent, first of all. Thank you very much. Because I think my answer to that question would be to help everyone feel grateful. Mm -hmm. because we the municipality is absolutely spectacular we have everything we need and i think as a as municipal residents we don't in fact appreciate that so i think if we could appreciate what we have and be grateful for it mm -hmm. and work from that as our base mm -hmm. i think it might be the best way to really build from where we are now and mm -hmm. running for council that's what any new councillor or any returning councillor has to do and build upon that so it's appreciating what we have and being extremely grateful for that we are blessed with an environment which is absolutely splendid as you mm -hmm. well know yeah we have a lake we have a beautiful river it's true that port hope might have settled on the lake in the past and on the river in the past but when you think about it today an urban environment like ward one of port mm -hmm. hope doesn't really need a river there's no economic use of the river that we're making now and yet we have this gift of a river mm -hmm. that flows into the lake which of course still provides an economic mm -hmm. purpose to the, the port itself so i think one is to appreciate the river as just a gift a mm -hmm. true gift to us and then we have all of this countryside in which we now sit oh, yeah. north of the more urbanized area and that is such an asset to any town to be able to call part of itself mm -hmm. that again i think that we we have it as a blessing and we have it as a resource and we just have to appreciate what we have so the magic wand would do that it would just sort of ding us all on the head and say please look around you we we have everything we need yeah. to be a fantastic fantastic municipality and going forward we should build on that so i guess that's my answer magic wand that's a beautiful answer actually so for my next question is about mm -hmm. the business and the environment okay. what should you think is more important the business development of this township or the environmental aspect and if your answer is the balance of both how do you think you'll be doing this as part of your agenda. Hmm. Well, I think, I think we have to be past that duality in our minds and in the way we build the future because business development and an appreciation of the environment can no longer be seen as two separate entities. They, they must, they must interrelate. They must interrelate from this point forward. They should have interrelated many, many decades ago. And we all know, we all know the clock is ticking. Um, we are faced with ecological problems on every level. Mm -hmm. And I think the business community is, it's driven by a different motive from preservation of the ecology. There's no doubt about it. And in fact, as I, when I contemplated writing for council, running for council, and I actually was consulted by someone about animal welfare issues and I, I had to close my comments about the bylaws as they exist in Port Hope etc. I had to close my comments by saying I was I was a bit perplexed as I run for council I am a bit perplexed any councillor is running to represent human beings mm -hmm. not the environment and not 
the animals within that environment. So not the flora and not the fauna. They're not electors. Mm -hmm. And that's the conundrum we really face as human beings. We have political systems that respond to the needs or demands of each other, of human beings. They are not set up to respond to the needs of the environment. So as I replied to this woman, I said, please, you have to be the best advocate out there you can be for the environment. Mm -hmm. I, if I should be blessed to win for council, have to represent your voice. I have to represent the human beings who have elected me, but your voice can represent the flora and the fauna. Mm -hmm. And I think that as counselors, we have to recognize, of course, that the business community is other human beings. Mm -hmm. The environment is not running a business. It's running its natural course, which it has done since, since time immemorial. But the real need for us is to recognize that as human beings, the voices have to be spoken by others within our constituency of human beings. And those are the voices of animals and, and, and plants. So we're beyond the point where we can talk about business interest versus ecological interests or environmental interests. We must as human beings recognize that we will have no environment in which to live if we do not recognize the gift that it is to us. So it, 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 it's difficult to see how I would move forward with that in the, con, in the context of a council environment, mm -hmm. but it would always be in the back of my mind. How are we impacting the environment on the decisions that we're making? It's the way I live my life. I'm an organic farmer. Mm -hmm. um, we run an organic bakery. And so the organic component is where the, the, the respect for nature, the recognition of the necess necessity for sustainability mm -hmm. in our environmental interactions lies. That's okay. beautiful. Thank you. For my third topic, mm -hmm. the old and the new. Ah, okay. Knowing that a big demographic of our town are older and retirees, how do you think we should balance the plants with our youth? Let me reiterate that. We have a large population of retirees and seniors in our community. How will you balance their needs while increasing opportunities for our youth? Well, again, I sort of start from a natural perspective. Um, we're all part of that continuum, mm -hmm. known in the past as the seven ages of human being. Um, so we all start off little and we age and over time we become among the elderly or, or those who are a part of the, the experienced, mm -hmm. the uh, resource um, of a community. And if in fact the relationships have continued, these are the elders of the community who mm -hmm. have a relationship to younger. So I think I would take the basis of a social environment which must nurture that continuum. Mm -hmm. So the continuum has to be respected, it has to be nurtured. And one of the ways that we can do that, I think, in a social environment is to respect, is to recognize the fact that some human beings have become orphaned from families, mm -hmm. whether they are extremely old or whether they're extremely young. And perhaps we hear more about, well, with COVID, we've heard about both ends of the spectrum, mm -hmm. I think. Um, mm -hmm. But I think perhaps we hear more about the casualties that the young are in that being orphaned from the interconnectedness. But in with the isolation that came with COVID and, and the recognition that many, many of our seniors are caught in homes isolated from young people or even their own uh, offspring. Family, yeah. So that what I would do, I think, in a, in a context like Port Hope, which is relatively small, mm -hmm. we're only 13 plus thousand, we can create families. We can create interconnectedness between older people and younger people. It's been tried in small school environments where older people are brought into the context of the schools or school children are brought into elderly yeah, homes. 100%. And so I think that it's that experience of the other part of the age spectrum mm -hmm. that really can enlighten both the youth and make them realize, yes, with strength, we will continue on and we will become adults and we will become older. Mm -hmm. And older people can realize they still have a connectivity. 
to their past mm -hmm. when they were young, and many of them feel very young, Stephen, now, oh, but they, sure. can, they can see it being, of course, enacted and, 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 and with the authenticity, of mm -hmm. authenticity that young people have. So I think it's very much creating the bonds between older people and younger people and those caught in the middle. Yeah. Um, because they often are the sandwich generation that's trying to pull both ends yep. together and, and just simply doesn't have the time or the strength or the energies to do that. So I think we can, as a community, create settings where that can take place mm -hmm. or nurture settings where it's already taking place. And I, I don't have a lot of experience doing that, but I think that as counselors, we can pull our energies together that's and great. create that environment. Absolutely. Because I value, as we all do, I think every part of the human experience. Thank that's, you. That's great. So for my fourth topic, mm -hmm. it's about First Nations and uh -huh. Indigenous people. Okay. Do you have a truth and reconciliation plan with Indigenous people? If so, what is your agenda in this? What are your plans to help our community participate in reconciliation with Indigenous people? Okay, so you're going to see a kind of running thread through my answers here, uh, and the questions are wonderful. Um, Thank you. So I come from a farming family, mm -hmm. and farmers are the settlers. Mm -hmm. Farmers are the ones who, whom the new dominating culture that came into the Aboriginal space, the First Nations space in Canada, um, they came in and they settled here and in settling while they may not have been the the first guard to mm -hmm. move a population aside to allow for the settlers to come into that space they certainly were the ones to establish themselves there and so i find it a very very perplexing issue um, both from a historical perspective and also from a present economic perspective. A lot of First Nations people, and this is a historical, um, there was a historical conundrum for some of the earliest settlers, were not farmers. And much of the initial, um, initial outreach, let's say, to those who were pushed onto reserves was to say, farm. <laughs> Here's the land, farm. But these were not a farming people. They were hunter-gatherers. Mm -hmm. They were different, of course, and still are many different First Nations with different ways mm -hmm. of engaging with the environment. But farming was not the mainstay of the, of the nurturing of the communities. So how do we engage, uh, particularly as a representative from Ward 2, mm -hmm how in representing farmers, of which we are really the minority within the Ward 2 residents, but mm -hmm. nonetheless, 192, as the post office recognizes, um, how do we engage in a meaningful way from the basis that we have, which is to need the land to survive economically ourselves and mm -hmm. for our children? And that's the real conundrum that I find. But perhaps it doesn't have to stem from that basis mm -hmm. that we are farmers. It has to stem rather from the basis that we all appreciate the land. Mm -hmm. We all recognize that to feed ourselves, we need the land in whatever, whatever resources it yields to us, whether through farming, whether through hunting, whether through gathering. And there is a whole foraging movement mm -hmm. now that's oh, very definitely. active. Yeah, yeah. Foraging is beautiful. Um, yeah. And so I think it's a matter of, again, connecting with one another, connecting with the communities, creating an environment where there is not only mutual respect, but the ability to exchange information. And so that we as farmers become better skilled at many of the, the nurturing skills to keep the land healthy, to keep the respect for the integration of many aspects of the land. We have wildlife corridors here in Ward 2, mm -hmm. which do allow for the wildlife to move somewhat, but even our farming cultures in the residual lands could foster that much more. Mm -hmm. And so I think that kind of respect of the need for wildlife, for fostering wildlife, and for the natural, of course, the natural flora and fauna that did mm -hmm. exist in the time of the First Nations could also be fostered. So there's much to learn from First Nations cultures and if we can open that space of real discussion, and yet without, and I, and I think I, 
I can only speak from that. I, there is settler guilt without feeling the need to turn the land back over to First Nations people, mm -hmm. which is one option which has been adopted by some farmers around Rice Lake, so very mm -hmm. close to us. Mm -hmm. um, I have acquaintances who purchased land and then gave it to the First Nations people. That's good. It's interesting. It's fascinating. Mm -hmm. um, it's not something that as the, the economic base that I... that I, I don't think I could afford that, but then... It, I guess, yeah, yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a different perspective, and it did stem from people who were not farmers, but had the wealth to be able to invest mm -hmm. in land and then turn it over to First Nations mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. But certainly um, there is archaeological wealth in this part of the world, mm -hmm. and we should foster the understanding and res research Mm -hmm. uh, involved and, and needed to do that kind of archaeological work so that we're all yes. better informed about what took place here before. Um, and some of that is taking is taking place around Rice Lake with the mound, uh, the mounds, the, the mm -hmm. prehistoric and subsequent First Nations mounds that are there. So there are ways, I think, of, of interacting um, without without deviating in a, in a, in a sort of um, folkloric way yep. from what we do mm -hmm. uh, it has to be it has to come from a place of authentic desire to understand and authentic stepping forward rather than looking back stepping forward and seeing how we can all grow mm -hmm. together uh, there's no one doing history that's that's the raw truth that we all have to face mm -hmm. and so how do we grapple with that and recognize that there's loss, there's grief from loss. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, I've been to Truth and Reconciliation um, meetings, encounters, and I, I, uh, the emotion is just almost too profound yeah. for me. I, 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 I have a very hard time grappling with the loss that others feel and how do we reconcile? What does it mean mm -hmm. to reconcile? How can one reconcile with loss and the grief from loss? I, I frankly don't know. Um, so as as the newcomers to Canada, mm -hmm. as the new settlers to Canada, how do we play a part in that? And I think it has to come from those who those who can tell us what 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 is meaningful as an interaction. And so what can what can First Nations people tell us that will really demonstrate to them a step in the way of, of healing for them mm -hmm. and 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 going forward so that we all are part of um, the 21st century. Yep. Um, so thank you. Yeah. It's a very it's challenging good. question. <laughs> but, yeah. It's great. Great answers. Great answers. Um, for my last question is mm -hmm. about the corporation and the people. Oh, okay. The current large corporations and developers that are stakeholders in our township have a lot to say in most projects here. <laughs> How can you make sure that the local residents' interests are met? Or should I reiterate or rephrase that as mm -hmm. at present there are large in there are large corporations and developers with the influence and resources to have their say about most projects here. Can you balance corporate interests with the interests of residents and ensure that the people who live here are also heard? <laughs> balance, no. That's it's going. It's an imbalance. There's an imbalance. Uh, now, of course, among the residents here are also those who represent corporations or are big parts of corporations or are large developers. Um, so they they do have a stake in pushing their own interest, obviously. But are they the majority? No, no, certainly not. So the majority is still residents who need to make their voice heard. Um, we are a small municipality in a small part of the world, in a small province, in a small, in a small country in terms of weights, uh, economic weight in the world. So I think economically, we have to respect that we are but a small, very small piece in a very, very large, large game mm -hmm. that developers are playing in this global economy. And right across the way from us here mm -hmm. um, is land that is now presently for sale. It's owned by a venture capital company out of, G out of Germany. Mm -hmm. So someone in Germany thought Purchase that land. land should be purchased in this part of the municipality of Fort Hope for some reason. Mm -hmm. So I don't think we can be naive about how far 
the reach is that's looking for resources. Mm -hmm. And those resources are, to us, very different from the, the face that those resources have to the, the greater, larger economy. Mm -hmm. And so I think we have to be extremely careful in decisions that are made about what we do with our resources here mm -hmm. in this municipality. And that's perhaps from a, a perspective of a governance decision-making level. But we also have to be extremely careful as residents mm -hmm. to value, back to that respecting mm -hmm. and, and feeling blessed for what we have, value what we have. Value. Understand it, appreciate it, and appreciate its importance in this incredibly larger complex of the economic environment in which we live. And that these are just but small pieces, but they're important pieces oh, for definitely. much, much larger entities. Definitely. So have we reached a time limit? Or? No, there's no time <laughs> no, limit. No, no time Wade's limit. We've got five questions and we're <laughs> That's all good. Great. Well, this is a very complex one. And I think that um, if, we, if, we can, if we can really appreciate the role that very large corporations have and that their interests are not our interests, basically. Their mm -hmm. interests are making money for them. And so we have to understand that as a small rural and small urban mm -hmm. environment, um, if larger players come in, they have much more money than we would ever have mm -hmm. as a municipality, as a tax base, mm -hmm. as any sort of, of clout that we as residents would have. So it's really being the gatekeepers and watching, mm -hmm. watching what's coming and, and being very alert to the tentacles. Um, there's a lot of appropriation of land that's being worked, albeit, but not to disclose any undisclosable mm -hmm. information, but there are shell companies that work here buying land, mm -hmm. working it to their to the obvious ends mm -hmm. that we would think any other farmer would be working it, but there there's a, a hidden agenda. Mm -hmm. So we just have to be very, very careful about how we want our resources used, where we want those monies from those resources, those earnings from those resources to go. Mm -hmm. And, and make sure that as a municipality, we keep our own values front and forward. What do we want and how do we want our resources used? How do we want as a community to express our use of those resources? And everyone has a voice. Yes. So my second wish for a magic wand would be, <laughs> <laughs> would be that representational government really is that, that it represents the voices of everyone who has elected someone so that we don't None of us comes in with an agenda. None of us comes in with what we think should be done. But we listen. We hear the voices of those whom we represent. Mm -hmm. Those are the voices we represent at a different platform, at a different level. But they are the distillate of the voices that have elected us. So, yes. you thank know, you very much. No, thank you very much. It was <laughs> enlightening. Oh, it's been a pleasure. It's I really mean, um, this will definitely help me decide how to vote for because i do live in ward two right right <laughs> a co-farmer <laughs> yeah a co-farmer as well thank you for your time thank and, you Jen. And good it's luck. been wonderful yeah, thank you good. very much it's oh, been a pleasure thanks for stopping by